Hey guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create an animation blueprint and blend spaces in Unreal Engine 5. So maybe you've got a character like this. I've got a metahuman here that isn't actually animated, and you're wondering, how can I animate my character? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so for the record guys, I'm using Unreal Engine 5.2.0, the most recent version as of the day of recording this video. And as you can see here, I've got some animations uh, that I've retargeted onto my MetaHuman base skeleton. If you're using a different character that uses a different skeleton and different animations, uh, that's all good. The same logic applies. Um, I'm just basically going to show you how to take these animations, uh, use some of them to create a blend space, and also set up an animation blueprint and animate your characters. So the first thing we're going to do is create a blend space. Uh, we just right click and go to animation, down here in legacy, blend space 1D. Uh, so here you've got to select the skeleton that your character is using. For me it's the metahuman base skeleton and I'm just going to call this blend space underscore idle walk run idle walk run um, if you're wondering what skeleton your character is using you can open up your character's blueprint and if you select the skeletal mesh you'll see over here the skeletal mesh asset you can hit browse on this take you to the skeletal mesh asset and then up here you'll see this skeleton button if you click that it'll take you to the skeleton and as you can see here mine's using the metahuman base skeleton all right so let's open up this blend space that we've created now what a blend space is um, this is just a 1d blend space 1d so it just has this one axis um, and this uh, blend space is going to take a variable and um, depending on what that that variable will tell it where along this axis it will um, it will play a blend of animations that you place along this axis so up here in the top left you'll see axis settings horizontal axis we're going to change the name of this to speed and the maximum value here to 500 so this is going to take our character's uh, ground speed and uh, use that to determine how it's going to blend these animations. So I'm going to grab this idle animation and drag it all the way to the left. So the speed here is zero. I am going to take this walk animation and this run animation as well. Drag this run animation all the way to the end here. So the speed is 500 and I'm going to click on this walk animation and I'm going to set the speed to 230 because uh, as default in the third person template 230 is uh, this is how it's set up um, in the template on the blend spaces that come in the template um, that's it for this so we can save this and close this and we are now going to create our animation blueprint so right click and go animation animation blueprint Again, select the skeleton that your character is using. So for me, MetaHuman base skeleton, and I'm going to call this AnimBP underscore MetaHuman. Open this up, and the first thing we're going to do is go over to the event graph and set up some logic here that's basically going to cast to our character's blueprint and. Um, every time the blueprint updates animation it's going to set a set of variables so that our animation blueprint knows what our character is doing at any given time and therefore knows which animations to play so we're going to use this try get pawn owner and we're also going to look for a node called event blueprint begin play and off of try get pawn owner we're just going to get an is valid Also off of try get pawn owner, we are going to cast to, uh, no, not third person character. Um, we're going to cast to our character's blueprint, which for me is BP Natalia. As BP Natalia, we are going to promote this to a variable. Also as BP Natalia, we are going to get the uh, movement component, get character movement. And we're also going to promote this to a variable 
and we're going to call this movement component. So just to walk you through what I've done here, when this uh, blueprint begins, we are checking that uh, there, someone owns this character. Um, if they do, then who, whatever character they are owning, uh, we are casting to that and then we are promoting this to a variable so that um, throughout this update animation we don't need to cast and cast and cast over to the character we just cast once and create a variable uh, which is a reference to that uh, we, we can call this one character reference we are also um, since we've casted over we're um, getting the character movement and promoting that to a variable as well so that we don't need to um, you know use this reference to cast and to get the character movement every time we also create a um, create a reference to the movement component so down here off event uh, blueprint update animation we're going to get our character reference here and again uh, we can just duplicate this is valid duplicate that so just checking that there is indeed a character and if there is we are going to run a sequence and add a couple of pins to this sequence so every time the blueprint updates animation it's going to run through this sequence boom 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 and update a set of variables that tells our animation blueprint what our character is doing at any given time and which animations to play um, the first one we can get the movement component and off the movement component we can get is falling this is kind of a built-in function that tells um, the the movement component um, if the character's in the air uh, we can drag off the return value and promote to variable and we'll call this is falling plug that into the first pin that's our first variable set the next one we are going to drag off of this character reference and uh, get velocity. This might have to scroll down to the bottom here, get velocity. Promote this to a variable, call it velocity, and plug it into the next pin here. We're going to use get velocity for the next few. Um, so then we'll drag off get velocity and um, what we're looking for is vector length xy promote this to a variable and we're going to call this one ground speed plug that into the next one here next one we're going to get our character's direction so off of the character reference let's uh, get the actor rotation off of get active rotation uh, we will calculate direction the velocity here is the velocity of our character plug it in there and the return value promote to variable and we'll call this direction plug this into the next execution pin and that's it guys that's a really good base um, we're not necessarily going to use all of these variables in the basic sort of locomotion animations that we're going to set up today um, but I just wanted to show you that um, this is a, a really good starting point these these four are kind of the four fundamental variables um, of what our character is doing at any given time its direction its ground speed velocity which you can split later on to get vertical velocity or X or Y whatever you need and also is our character in the air all right, so with that done, we're going to head over to the anim graph. Okay, so over in the event graph, the very first thing we're going to do is uh, create a new state machine, state machine, and we will rename this to locomotion. Also gonna drag off of here and search for cache, new save cached pose, and I'm going to rename this one main states 
So basically what this is doing is it's taking whatever the state machine is outputting and caching it in uh, saving it into this cache called main states which we can then call up at any time. So if I look for main states down here use cached pose main states I am then pulling up whatever's cached into this saved cache here pulling it up here and outputting it here. Um, I'm also going to look for a slot default slot and put this in between my cached pose and my output pose here. What this is, is um, this is the slot that any animation montages that you create will be played in. So if you ever want to use an animation montage, uh, which you most likely will, you will eventually need one of these slot default slots. So it's good to just put one of those in there. Uh, we're going to go into this locomotion state machine right here and drag off of entry and add a state. We're going to call this idle slash walk slash run. You can double click on this state to go in here and we are going to grab our blend space that we've just created. BS underscore idle walk run. Plug it into the output here and also grab ground speed. Plug it into speed there. And that is the fundamentals of an animation blueprint already created. So if we go to our characters blueprint here, you can see that I have changed the anim class to anim bp underscore metahuman, the uh, animation blueprint that we created. And if I hit play, our character can now run around. Our character is now animated. But if I hit jump, nothing happens because we haven't set up those animations yet in the animation blueprint. So I'm going to show you now how to do that. Head on back to the animation blueprint. Uh, and in the locomotion state, we are going to create what's called a state alias. I'll explain to you in a moment exactly what this is, but we're just going to call this to jump slash falling. And then off of this, we are going to add another state called jump whoops and off of jump we are going to add another state called falling also going to connect this one up to falling here we are also going to create another state alias called to land and off of land another state called land and then land will go back into idle walk run. Now, basically what these state aliases are, um, they are just a cleaner way, essentially a cleaner way of doing these graphs. So instead of idle walk run going into jump and going into falling, um, this, if you select this one and over here, you'll see these uh, states here. If I check idle walk run, and I'm also going to check land. What this means is that these transition rules, uh, when these transition rules are met, um, jump and falling is able to be transitioned to from any uh, to uh, from any of these states that are checked over here. So idle walk run or land. If our character's in idle walk run or land, and these conditions are met, it can then transition into jump and falling. If we select to land, uh, I am just going to check over here, uh, jump and falling. So if our character is jumping or falling, it is then able to transition into land whenever this transition rule is met. Um, so very quickly, the first thing we're gonna do is just add the animations to these states. So we'll go into jump and I'll grab my jumping animation, plug it in here. go into falling and grab my falling animation here. And while we're here, select the falling animation and check over here loop animation because obviously if our character's falling, 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 we want that animation to loop. Go into land, grab our land animation. Now this land animation is actually an additive. So I'm going to apply additive here I can hold control and drag this down onto additive and it will be added to the base pose which is our locomotion.
ah, main states we called it, main states. So this, um, this land animation is being added onto a base pose, which is the main states, which is our locomotion, whatever the character's doing there. Now, if we hit compile, it will um, give us all these errors about can enter transition will never be taken. Um, and that's because we haven't set up these transitional rules yet. So these rules dictate um, when the character can move into these other states. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the um, to jump falling to jump. Um, if we select this one, we just want to make sure that the priority order is set to one up here um, because we want it to um, preference going into jump rather than falling just in case we jumped. So we're going to double click on this transition rule here and what we're going to do is get is falling, connect that to an and boolean and we also want to get our velocity right click and go split struct pin and off of velocity z which is our vertical velocity we are going to get a greater and put in here 100 so if our character is falling and its vertical velocity is greater than 100 it can enter the uh, jump state Now this transition to, um, to jump falling to falling here, we're going to just click on it and change priority order to two and enter this one and just check if our character is falling. Now jump to falling, this one is just going to be an automatic transition when the jump animation is completed we want it to automatically transition into the falling animation so just click on this one and up here automatic rule um, automatic rule based blah 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 so fancy way of saying that the animation's finished so it can then trans uh, transition into the next one okay um, the transition to land if we double click that one we want to get is falling and a not boolean so if our character is not falling, it can then transition into land and uh, land into idle walk run. We can click on this one and also set this one as an automatic transition. Once the landing animation is completed, it can transition back into idle walk run. Um, infinite recursion detected with save cache pose, main states and main states. Uh, right. So, locomotion main states. This is to do with this um, apply additive. Um, we might even just. Um, might even just grab the blend space for idle walk run and plug this in here and ground speed plug that in there it's effectively this is doing the same thing that i was trying to do with the um with the cached uh, main states it's just applying this land to the base which is our idle walk run it's obviously landing so it's going to blend with that um that is it if i hit play You'll see our character is animated, it can jump and play a nice little landing animation which is blended with the walking. That's it, that's all we set out to do guys. We set up an animation blueprint and animated our character using blend spaces and transitional rules and I've thrown in a couple of other things there which is saving a cached um, pose and also a slot default slot for future use of animation montages. If this has been of any use to you, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.